Hi and welcome to WEH Videos. My name is Skip and in this video we'll take a quick look at the turn coordinator and learn some of its uses. To understand yaw there are a few other definitions that you need to know about and we're going to talk about those. Relative wind. Relative wind is defined by the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge in the Airport Flying Handbook as the direction of the airflow with respect to the wing. If a wing moves forward horizontally, the relative wind moves backwards horizontally. Relative wind is parallel to and opposite of the flight path of the airplane. So what that means is, if this is our flight path, the relative wind will be opposite of that and parallel to it. Another way to think of this is if you're on a motorcycle going down the freeway at 60 miles an hour, that wind you feel in your face is the relative wind. And lastly, you need to understand what coordinated flight and uncoordinated flight is. And the flying handbook describes it like this. Coordinated flight occurs whenever the pilot is proactively correcting for yaw effects associated with the power of the engine, the propeller effects, aileron inputs, how the airplane reacts when turning, and the airplane rigging. The airplane is in coordinated flight when the airplane's nose is yawed directly into the relative wind and the ball is centered in the skid slip indicator. And you can see what a coordinated turn looks like here in this center image. Here we have the ball is in the center of the skid slip indicator and the little wing is on the tick mark here which means we are in a coordinated turn. This is going to be a two minute turn if we were to do a 360. Notice that the pilot feels like the force is straight down into the street. This is what you want. On the other hand, in a skid, you feel like you're going to slide off the seat to the right. So we need to correct for this and you would do that by stepping on your left rudder. The rule of thumb is step on the ball. So if the ball is over here on the left, when you add left rudder, it's going to bring the ball back to center and get you back to coordinated flight. The same thing is true on a slip. Here the ball is all the way over on the right and you feel like you're going to slip off your seat to the right. So you would add right rudder, rudder here to bring the ball back to center and end up in a coordinated flight. Now if you don't have the little turn coordinator here but you have a glass cockpit you will notice up here that this little dash here below the pyramid has slipped off to the right. In this case you would still add a left rudder to bring this back. Here we have coordinated flight and here we have a slip. It's pretty much the opposite of the turn coordinator but it works the same way. You want to bring this back to center to get into coordinated flight. So in the real world, in a real airplane, a pilot can feel this and can make the corrections without having to look at the little ball. Now sometimes they have to look. Um, you want to trust your instruments more than you trust yourself, that's for sure. There are situations where what you feel is not actually what is happening and that can be quite scary. This can happen when you're flying in the clouds, you're flying IFR and you can't see out the window. You really need to trust your instruments at that point. Alright, in this image we can see the things that affect the yaw of the airplane and I got this image from the pilot handbook of aeronautical knowledge and the airplane flying handbook and as we can see here in this left turn we have more drag on the right wing. We have reduced lift, we have more lift, we have adverse yaw caused by the propeller. So we use the rudder to oppose this. Now since we have additional 
drag on this wing. It's going to pull this wing back a bit, which means the tail is going to go this way. So what do we have to do? We have to step on a rudder and bring this back into coordinated flight. So I think that's enough images. Uh, let's get in the airplane and see what some of this actually looks like. And we'll start with the takeoff because believe it or not, the propeller really affects you on the takeoff and it's necessary to add some right rudder. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here we are at my favorite airport, Benton Field in Redding, California, and we're ready to take off. And I'm going to demonstrate how on the Cessna, the propeller affects the yaw of the airplane. I'm going to need to add right rudder on takeoff um, because of the propeller effect, the effect it has on the airplane. So here we go. I'm adding full power, and notice I'm going to the left. i got to add right rudder, right rudder, a little more right rudder right rudder, a lot of right rudder here. Now we can lift off. And I still have a right rudder. And it's going to take a while because I'm going so slow. When I start going faster, it doesn't have the same effect on the airplane. So that's how the propeller can affect the yaw of the airplane and why you need to add a little right rudder during takeoff. Another use for the turn coordinator is to perform a standard rate turn. And you do that by putting the tip of the wing on either this mark or this mark for a left or a right turn. Standard rate of turn means that you will do a 360 degree turn in exactly two minutes if you keep these wingtips on the mark. And you use this when uh, air traffic controller may ask you to do a 360 degree turn to increase the spacing between you and the airplane in front of you. Maybe you're too close. And the other place you would use this would be in a holding pattern where you would fly a specific heading for say one minute then you would do a one minute turn, coordinated turn or a standard rate turn, and then fly for another minute and then perform another one minute turn or 180 degree turn. And you do that by using these wingtips and placing them on the left or the right, depending on which way you're instructed to turn. And we're going to take a look at that in just a minute. All right, we're going to start with a right 360 degree standard rate turn. And here I am coming into Reading Airport, KRDD, and I'm entering downwind for runway 34. And let's pretend that there's another airplane right here just starting to turn on final, and there's just no way that he's going to get off the runway before I'm going to be touching down, and they don't allow that. No way two airplanes on the same runway. So the tower would instruct me to do a right 360 here, and that will add two minutes. And so it has to be a standard rate turn here, so the tower knows I'm going to take exactly two minutes. I can't just make some really ra radical turn. So let's see how that looks. So I'm cruising along, and the tower says, Cessna 84 Delta Lima, perform a right 360 for spacing. And I'm going to say, right 360 for spacing. So I'm going to start my turn, and let's get our little indicator up here. I got that right on the wing, so I'm going to add a little right rudder uh, to keep that in the center, and I'm going to keep that little wing right on the tick mark. Now, I could set the clock for a one minute, but this is visual flight rules. I uh, can look out the window and see where I'm going. If it was IFR rules and it was I couldn't see anything, I would set my timer for one minute, or pardon me, for two minutes, make my two minute turn, watch my instruments carefully. But I know I'm going to come out on the um, 160 heading, which is the reciprocal of runway 34, where I'll be landing. So here we go. Now I've really blown this. I've gained some altitude. Uh, too much talking, not enough flying here. So let's not get too upset with that. Thank you. 
So we're doing pretty good here on the turn. We're keeping the wing right there. We got the little ball in the middle and I'm getting back down to pattern altitude, slowly but surely. I'm gonna roll out on the 160 heading, which will be the reciprocal for 340. And if everything goes well, I should come right out with a nice 360 degree turn and the airplane in front of me has had plenty of time to get off the runway and I can go ahead and make my landing. So we're coming up on 160. I'm going to stop my rollout right about now and I'm going to come out on 160 just like that. Let up on my right rudder a bit and there we have it. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Okay, let's get rid of our instrument. Let's take a look at the map and just see how we did here with our 360. All right, not too bad. We came in on a downwind. We were instructed to do a 360, which we performed right here. And we've added two minutes to our time and now I can go ahead and land. So that's just one thing for the standard rate turn. Now let's take a look at, say, a holding pattern, how that would work with the standard rate turn. All right, the other use I mentioned for the standard rate turn is a holding pattern. And I have here the upper half of an approach plate for Reading Muni KRDD runway 34. And here's the runway right here, 34. And over here is where you would perform a holding pattern if you, say, had a missed approach. And if we go up here to the upper right, we can see the instructions for a missed approach. It says, climb to 1,100, then climbing right turn to 5,000 via heading 090. So what they're saying is we're gonna take off here, we're gonna not take off, but we're gonna keep on flying instead of landing on this heading and make a climbing right turn on a heading of 090 until we reach the 044 radial off of the KRDDVOR and then we're going to head out here to this location, Itmore, fix, and then we will perform a holding pattern. In this case, we will make a standard rate of turn on a left turn, and then we will fly heading 177 for one minute, and then we will make another standard rate turn for one minute, and then we will fly heading 357 for one minute. And we'll just keep doing that until the tower tells us, okay, you can come in and land. So that's basically it for a holding pattern. If you want to learn more about this, I did a video on holding patterns and missed approach. You can go to my channel and you can check that out. So that's it for this little tutorial on the basics of the turn coordinator and the things that you should know about it. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this, please click the like button. If you'd like to leave a comment or send me a message, that would be great. I love answering all my comments. So thank you so much for watching, and God bless.